Hello everyone, welcome to lecture 8 of the course Bioinformatics for Schoolers. Today we will learn in details about the concepts of transcription and translation of gene sequences. Let us first revise a few concepts. DNA is a chemical compound which is double helical in nature and it is made up of four nucleotide base pairs called A, T, G and C. And this DNA A is makes up the genome of an organism. The functional units of this genome are called genes. The central dogma of life or the life as we see through biological perspective is that DNA makes up the RNA, which is like which acts as a messenger to translate into the protein, which are the functional units of life. And you can see in this image that DNA, which maintains itself uh, through replication, can also lead to RNA synthesis, that is transcription. And this RNA can further lead to protein synthesis, which is also called translation. Now, you have already learned in previous videos, such as lecture three and four about transcription, wherein a DNA strand, which is a double strand, which goes from one strand, five prime to three prime, and the other strand goes from three prime to five prime. From that DNA, the three prime to five prime strand acts as a template strand, and it leads to transcription of RNA with the help of RNA polymerase, which opens up this DNA and leads to transcription, which happens from five prime to three prime end, using the three prime to five prime DNA strand as a template strand. Now this RNA is similar to its stru in structure with the DNA, but it is single stranded in nature. And DNA is composed of four bases, cytosine, adenine, thymine, and guanine, that is A, T, G, and C. However, RNA is composed of adenine, cytosine, guanine, and uracil. It does not have thymine in it. There are various types of RNAs which are present in our cells. The most common that we are all aware of are the mRNAs or the protein coding RNAs. The other ones are the non-coding RNAs, which can be of different types. For example, regulatory non-coding RNAs, which can be either short, like miRNAs or siRNAs, or they can be long non-coding RNAs, like link RNAs or circular RNAs. These non-coding RNAs can also be housekeeping, that is, they are required for a normal functioning of the cell, like ribosomal RNAs or transfer RNAs. Now, these RNAs uh, are transcribed by different types of polymerases in the cell. And today we will focus on mRNAs. There are various types of RNA polymerases that are present in the cell. For example, we have RNA polymerase 1, which is important for transcription of our RNAs, that is ribosomal RNAs. We have RNA polymerase 2, which is important for the transcription of mRNAs, SNOW RNAs, miRNAs, and others. And we have RNA polymerase 3, which is important for the transcription of tRNAs and some other RNAs. Now let's revisit transcription and revise all this in details. There are three steps in transcription of RNAs polymerase 2, which will be our focus because we are focusing today on mRNAs and their translation. So there are three steps. First is initiation, second is elongation, and the third is termination. So as you have learned earlier that for initiation and termination, there are sequences called promoter and terminator, which tell the polymerase that it has to either go or stop in the gene. However, how does this polymerase recognize the promoter and know where to start the transcription from? So DNA has some sequences called consensus sequences. As you know, that if you, if you want to go from one place to another, you quickly switch on the Google Maps to, uh, to get the navigation through the GPS. However, how does the GPS know which map to take or which location to take? So GPS uses latitudes and longitudes to mark a location and define the path accordingly. Similarly, DNA has consensus sequences that are required to navigate the path of these biological processes like replication, transcription, and translation. All of these processes have uh, consensus sequences. 
So for, for transcription, there are several consensus sequences. For example, BRE, Tata Box, INR, and DPE. Now, the point from where the transcription starts is called the zero point. And anything that is, any sequence that is upstream is, is in negative numericals. And anything that is downstream to it is in the positive numericals. Now, from the start of transcription, approximately 30 base pair upstream of the transcription start site is the data box. And 30 base pair downstream is the DPE. As you can see the element over here, and these elements are, because they are present on the DNA, these are also composed of the four bases. That is ATGC. As you can see, for Tata box, it is important that TA, TA is present along with a few more A's and T's. So these are uh, basically the consensus sequences. Let's see, let's look at the transcription inside the cell now. We have, uh, you have already learned about the prokaryotic transcription where the DNA is transcribed into RNA and then RNA is translated into protein. However, for eukaryotes, there are a few additional steps such as for DNA to RNA and RNA to protein, we need DNA to pre-mRNA, that is transcription of DNA happens into pre-mRNA, which is then spliced capped and tail, that is, it is processed to convert it into mature mRNA, which is then translated. And translation is happened in the cytoplasm of an organism after the RNA is exported from the nucleus to the cytoplasm. So these are a few additional steps that are present in eukaryotes. Also, there are a few differences, therefore, in the mRNAs of prokaryotes and eukaryotes. For example, if we consider the prokaryotic mRNAs, there is one long uh, stretch of nucleotides uh, on the RNA, which are then translated into multiple proteins. This is called a cistron. However, in the eukaryotic mRNA, one uh, strand of RNA is codes mostly for one type of protein, and it has five prime cap. It has tail of multiple A's, and it has a coding sequence and a non-coding sequence. Coding sequence means the part which will be translated into protein and non-coding sequence means the part which will not become the protein. Now, till now we have learned about RNA polymerases, mRNAs, transcription start site and consensus sequences of transcription. Another part of these consensus sequences of transcription is called enhancers. So like whenever we make a drawing, we first make an outline by pencil. That is similar to us knowing about the transcription start site. But then we need to outline with a black marker or a colored marker to first know where we have to color. Then only we proceed with the coloring of our picture that we have drawn. Similarly, for eukaryotic transcription, there are certain enhancers which bind the activator protein which starts the transcription. So these enhancer proteins are upstream, that is further before the start of transcription. Uh, and these are sequences on the DNA which bind an activator protein. This activator protein binds the polymerase and then only the transcription begins. So these enhancers function to make sure that the transcription is happening correctly and at the proper site. So now, after the transcription has begun, the transcription is happening, newly synthesized RNA transcript is coming out of the polymerase from 5' prime to 3' prime end, and the RNA polymerase factory is working on, just like different workers in a factory are performing different tasks. Similarly, in the RNA polymerase factory, different proteins are performing different tasks. For example, while the transcription is going on, there is capping also happening, with the help of capping factors at the five prime end of our mRNA. There is splicing also happening and there is three prime end of processing also happening for the proteins uh, for the mRNA that is tailing of an mRNA. So this processing is happening, this factory is working basically to get the RNAs ready. For example, whenever you go out during the winter days for school, you first wear your boots, your cap, your muffler, 
you take your school bag you take your jacket your blazer similarly rna has to perform different uh, modifications to get ready for its work for example capping tailing and splicing so uh, basically what are the these features of mrnas so as we can see here the dna which is a double strand and the template is a 3 prime to 5 prime strand is transcribed to a pre mrna this pre mrna has a 5 prime utr utr which means untranslated region it has a 3 prime utr that is again untranslated region it has exons and it has introns exons are the part which are translated into a coding sequence that is the protein sequence and introns are the part which will be spliced out that will it that is it will be taken out of the pre mrna to form the mature rna so in the mature mrna there is a 5 prime methyl guanosine cap there is a 5 prime utr that is untranslated region there is a protein coding sequence that is made up of exons there is a 3 prime utr and there is a poly a tail poly a tail meaning a tail a tail of multiple a's is present in the mature mrna first let's learn about capping so at the 5 prime end of the any rna there are three phosphate groups present on the nucleotide base from these three bases one phosphate is removed and is replaced by a bond with the gtp this gtp is then methylated that is ch3 group is added to this gtp to make the uh, 5 prime methyl guanosine uh, cap of the mrna similarly for uh, splicing to happen imagine that you have three ribbons attached to each other with the help of a glue there are two blue ribbons and one pink ribbon and you want to take out the pink ribbon and want the blue ribbons together what will you do with this uh, scenario you will cut the pink ribbon uh, out of these blue ribbons and you will glue the blue ribbons together to get the uh, desired ribbon that you want similarly is the mechanism of splicing where we want the intron out of the exonic sequences so therefore we will with the help of molecular scissors we will cut the intron out of the uh, of the exons and we will get the two exons together and the intron will be out of these two exons splicing is important because a particular gene for example here is a tropomyosin gene can have multiple types of products with the help of splicing for example as you can see here different type of organs like different type of muscles use different type of spliced mrna products to perform various types of functions for example here this shorter uh, mrna is present in the striated muscles here uh, this one is present in the brain muscles and so forth therefore splicing is an important mechanism that happens happens in the cell during transcription now we have learned about the transcription initiation we have learned about the transcription processing that happens during the transcription is happening we will now learn now about the transcription termination that is when does the polymerase know when to stop so uh, before transcription stops it recognizes the polymerase recognizes the poly a signal that is where it has to perform the poly a tailing that is it has to attach multiple a's on the rna and uh, this termination of transcription happens only when the polymerase recognizes this poly a signal there are certain factors which help the polymerase recognize this poly a tail for example you can see over here that there are cpsf protein which helps in recognizing the poly a tail just then the cleavage happens therefore this uh, polymerase knows where to cleave the rna the rna is cleaved and then poly a polymerase is attached uh, to the rna to make sure that it uh, to make sure that there are multiple a's added to the mrna as a tail now let's look at an example of transcription we have a dna template 
which goes which is double stranded and goes from 5 prime to 3 prime and 3 prime to 5 prime the black areas are the exonic areas which will become exon and will go into the mature mrna and the blue areas are the introns so if we were to make pre mrna of this dna template it would go something like this 5 prime to 3 prime it will take this 3 prime to 5 prime bottom strand as a template and it will make rna complementary to it reverse complementary to it that means this a will become u this g will become c and such and so forth similarly it will also transcribe the intron and the complete sequence this will be the pre mrna it will have 5 prime utr area it will have 3 prime utr area and it will have intron exons and such then capping will happen which will attach 5 prime methyl guanosine to in forward to this sequence then splicing will happen which will remove this intronic sequence from this uh, complete sequence and then polyatailing will happen which will recognize this aau aaa as the poly a signal and will attach poly a signal uh, poly a tail after this let's look at example 2 of the transcription uh, with the help of human beta globin gene so this is the normal adult beta globin primary rna transcript that is pre mrna which has exon 1 intron 1 exon 2 intron 2 and exon 3 this is the sequence of the three exons and normal mrna is formed from these three exons this is how the normal mrna looks like and this is uh, this is its polyate this is how transcription happens and this is how it looks like on the sequence after the transcription has happened this export ready rna which has the cap tail and has been sliced has been spliced will leave the nuclear pore complex uh, and will leave the nucleus to enter the cytoplasm and in the cytoplasm it is translated now as you have uh, learned earlier in lecture 4 that for translation you need uh, a ribosome and tRNAs and mRNA so in the ribosome you have three type of sites e site p site and a site from which the e site is the mRNA binding site the p site is the tRNA p and a sites are the tRNA binding sites tRNA or transfer RNA is used for translation this tRNA is the is uh, shaped like a clover leaf and it has at the at the midst of it, it has an anticodon which binds anticodon is uh, is a three base pair sequence which helps it bind to the mRNA which has codons like a uh, morse code uh, translation also has a genetic code so like there are dots and dashes which are uses which are used to make sure that we understand the letters in the morse code similarly there is genetic code or the code for life which has three uh, of these four bases in different combinations to make up the amino acids which are the functional units the structural units of the protein so the proteins that are made of the amino acids, these are the 20 amino acids that are present in our body. And they can be abbreviated to a three-letter abbreviation. For example, alanine can become ala, arginine can become arch, asparagine can become ASN, and similarly. They also have one-letter abbreviations, which can, that is, they are denoted by a single letter of the room of the alphabet, that is A r n and so forth so consider a sequence 5 prime to 3 prime uh, of an mrna c u c a g c g u u a c c a u it can be transcribed it can be translated into three possible scenarios the translation can either become begin at the first c and therefore since the codon is of three base pair it can be c u c leucine AGC, serine, GUU, valine, ACC, threonine, and so on. 
or it can skip the first C and it can start with U. That is UCA, serine, GCG, alanine, UUA, leucine, CCA, proline. Or it can skip CU and it can start its translation from the third C that is present on the sequence. CAG, that is glutamine, CGU, arginine, UAC, tyrosine, and CAU, histidine. So as you can see, in all these three scenarios, the, the protein sequence that comes in is different. Therefore, reading frame is important uh, to understand how the protein sequence is read. So this reading frame is read from the translation start site, which is AUG. So the translation always start with this codon AUG, which codes for methionine. So whenever a AUG is present, the reading frame will start after that. So for the same sequence that is CUC, that begins with CUC, if there is an AUG present up before it, it will start its uh, reading frame from AUG. That is AUG methionine, CUC leucine, AGC serine, GUU valine, and ACC threonine. Therefore, AUG starts the open reading frame. Now, let's now consider an example of codon usage. So we have a genetic code in which AUG uh, gives the start codon that is methionine, as we saw earlier in the previous slide. And UAA, UAG, and UGA are the three stop codons, which do not code for any amino acid. And in fact, tell the, uh, tell the uh, ribosome when it's time to stop translating. Consider this DNA sequence. This is the RNA that will be formed from this DNA sequence. And uh, this is the protein that will be formed from this RNA sequence. That is AUG will become methionine, GUG will become valine, CAA, glutamine, UUU, phenylalanine, AGG, arginine, and so forth until UGA, which is a stop codon, comes in and stop puts a stop to this protein sequence. So this mark, so now let's come to the open reading frame. For example, when you start a sentence, you start it with a capital letter. Similarly, AUG marks the start of the open reading frame. And there can be multiple ORFs that are present in an RNA sequence. Uh, consider this mRNA sequence for human insulin protein. Here you can see there are multiple AUGs present. Therefore, there can be multiple ORFs over, over here. However, like we saw in transcription, there are consensus sequences which navigate these uh, biological processes. Similarly, translation also has consensus sequences which nav helps in the navigation of translation and where to start this translation. There are two types of consensus sequences present in the organisms. In prokaryotic organism, there is the Schindelgano sequence, which is a course, uh, consensus sequence for prokaryotic translation. This particular uh, sequence, that is Schindelgano sequence, is present six to eight base pair upstream of the start codon AUG. That is, this combination of sequence, when present six to eight base pair uh, upstream of AUG, will lead to the correct positioning of AUG in the ribosome and thus start the translation. Similarly, in eukaryotes, the proximity of AUG with the 5' methylgonosine cap determines the start codon. And there is a sequence rich with G and C, GCC, AUG, GCC, which is the COSAC sequence and marks the protein translation initiation sites in eukaryotes. And the start codon is embedded, unlike the Schindelgano sequence, it is embedded in the COSAC sequence. So the ORF for the human insulin protein will become the coding sequence uh, of this protein and will start from the first AUG that is present, where the GCC is also present. And this is the coding sequence of the human insulin protein. So as uh, shown earlier in lecture four, this is how the translation happens. 
tRNA binds the ribosome, which binds the mRNA, and then the codon and anticodon uh, are uh, codon and anticodon are bound, and then this RNA moves along the ribosome, thus adding uh, thus adding amino acids to the uh, to the growing protein sequence, and this is how the protein is translated from M and mRNA until the stop codon comes in. So for the same example of transcription of human beta glomid gene where three exons were present and this was the, uh, the mRNA of the uh, human beta globin A gene, you can see the blue part is the, is the coding sequence, the gray part is the 5' prime UTR or the 3' prime UTR and you can see this uh, pink AUG marks the um, this pink AUG marks the start codon. And this CCC, ACC is actually the COSAC sequence that is given for this particular gene. And this blue sequence, light blue sequence, AAUAA, is the poly signal that is present in the 3' prime UTR. From this, if we were to make a CDS, we will make from the first AUG to wherever the first stop codon comes in, marks the first uh, marks the stop of this uh, particular coding sequence. And if we were to make a coding sequence out of this pre-mRNA, it will look like this, where it will start from AUG and it will end at the stop codon, one of the stop codons, whichever comes first here. In this case, it is UAA. And from that same coding sequence, this is what the protein sequence will look like. And in tertiary, in 3D, this is how the protein structure will look like if four of these beta-globin genes were attached together. After the proteins are translated, they have to get ready, just like the uh, transcription, uh, just like after transcription, the RNAs get ready, the proteins also need to get ready for their work. And there are different types of uh, post-translation modifications that happen for a protein, like hydroxylation, ubiquitylation, lipidation, depending upon what function the protein has to perform. So the protein, after it is, uh, is uh, post-translationally modified, it is folded into a polypeptide and can now function uh, and is now a functional protein. So in this lecture, you have learned about transcription. You have learned how DNA is transcribed to RNA in eukaryotes and how RNA can be translated into protein with the help of ribosome and tRNAs. And this protein, this polypeptide can get folded and can perform different type of functions. Thank you.